You would think by now I would have covered at least one proper Irish horror movie on this channel. I mean, we could talk about many great examples like Shrooms, Extraordinary, The Devil's Doorway, Boy Eats Girl, The Hole in the Ground, or even those super obscure, pure, born and bred gorilla films like Battle of the Bone, which is a martial arts zombie movie based around Belfast's political religious divide, which you just have to see to believe. So I've left a link to Diamanda Hegan's review below. So originally I intended to make this a video about the fantasy horror The Hallow, a film I referenced in my Leprechaun review about an English couple under siege by evil fairies in an Irish forest. However, with the extension of the Northern Ireland lockdown at the time of recording, I just wasn't in the mood for something too grim or violent for St Paddy's Day, so what about a lock in at the local pub instead? Twenty Twelve's Grabbers is Ireland's greatest and only monster movie. It tells a classical story set in the remote Father Ted-esque fictional island of Erin, which is basically Rathlin where part of the movie was shot, where after mutilated wheels wash ashore and several locals go missing, the Garda discover ravenous blood-sucking tentacled aliens breeding by the shore, and work with a ragtag team consisting of an English ecologist, the town drunk and the pub landlord to devise a plan to save the town folk as an impending storm approaches. You want to put, push it off a cliff or something? I say we feed it Father Potts. Blessed each shit it'll choke to death. <laughs> I beg your pardon. What's a joke, brother? However, the film's true unique selling point comes from its ridiculous midway revelation, where it's discovered that the aliens are fatally allergic to alcohol after the town drunk survives the initial attack. Could you put it on the eBay? Do you think? You're, you're not putting this on eBay. You are so lucky she didn't kill you. Yep, that's right. Being drunk is revealed to be a repellent against the alien onslaught. And so the group decides that the best way to protect the locals is to do the most Irish thing possible and host a free bar lock-in at the local pub to get as drunk as possible to wait out both the storm and alien invasion. A free bar? Oh, you're on board. Honestly, if that isn't enough to convince you to go watch it, nothing else will. But with that said, it doesn't become one of those gimmicky, one-note, stereotypical Irish flicks, because outside the alien conflict, its characters are wonderfully authentic and sentimental, and capture the true spirit of Irish charm and humour. Uh, uh, mm, it's extraordinary. It benefits from the fact that it was shot on location in many of the local areas, and grounds itself in a realistic atmosphere without exaggerating those Irish cliches that tend to pop up in films with a very reductive or limited understanding of Ireland. While it does take a little time to get going, the story predominantly revolves around the relationship between Garda partners Kieran and Lisa. Kieran is a depressed alcoholic with no interest in his job, and Lisa is a Dublin City officer temporarily reassigned to the island just for a brief change of pace. We will delve into their true backstories later in the spoiler section, but for now the general intrigue comes from their cute but awkward romantic tension, where Kieran's laid back lack of concern for policing a tiny island where nothing happens butts heads with Lisa's city girl ambition. It more or less takes a lot of that quirky local influence from Hot Fuzz, where in that film, uptight city boy Nicholas Angel constantly conflicts with the light-hearted locals, trying to soften his approach to policing a village where everyone knows each other and peace prevails. The supporting cast are just as fun and interesting, if indeed not as deep, but that's not really a requirement when the emphasis is on capturing the purity of the types of locals you see in real Irish towns, especially when it comes to their banter. Oh, savage. Oh, careful. You missed. Bring it, whatever. Fuck off it. Paddy. 
for example, the local drunk Paddy isn't just defined by his alcoholism. He's a helpful, hardworking fisherman just enjoying the simple pleasures in life. Then you have the sarcastic but always friendly pub landlord Brian, who's constantly nervous of angering his scary but still bubbly wife Yuna. And finally, you have Dr. Smith, the smug Englishman who thinks he's above the locals due to his scientific credentials, but is quickly put down by everyone who reminds him that he's still stuck on a barren Irish island with the rest of them. A grabber. A what? I have told you, Paddy, I'm not calling it that. It needs a name that defines its genus. I discovered it. I get to name it. It's that real sense of humbleness and relatability that invites you into its world. And when the aliens begin their reign of terror, the tension does legitimately mount up. I'll be all right. Keep your voice down. She's a gunner. So the most surprising aspect of the film is that for something this low budget at around $5 million, the CGI is tremendously believable and so organically implemented into the film, with its use of shadow, colour and a clever design simplicity similar to Attack the Block. Just for comparison's sake, the Thing prequel, which came out the year before Grabbers and masked over its practical effects with CGI, had a budget of $38 million and the backing of a major Hollywood studio. But despite this, since those animators were likely put under intense pressure and time constraints due to unnecessary studio interference, it doesn't look anywhere near as convincing or effective as Grabbers. Sure, the ignorant cynics out there will say the grabbers aren't as complex and usually appear in dimly lit environments to mask the visuals, but that does anything but make it easy. In fact, the film's specific conditions make it significantly more challenging because the creatures have to be tracked and rendered within much more complex lighting and weather dynamics on top of their fluent moving tentacles. While it helps that I'm creeped out by slimy tentacles and lanky fast moving limbs, what takes it that extra uncomfortable step to getting under my skin is the specific attribute of the grabbers being bloodsuckers that latch themselves onto akin to leeches as opposed to simply creatures that eat people. It harkens back to those obscure creature features and schlocky 80s horror flicks that made ordinary bugs, animals and even plants unexpectedly violent and sinister to play into the whole theme that humans are just a speck of dust within a universe of countless unknown possibilities. However, on a personal anecdote, I think that intense fear of blood-sucking creatures came from a film I watched as a child called Slugs, because I know it sounds ridiculous, but I'm pretty sure it was the first horror movie I ever saw, and I remember switching it off in pure terror after the scene where a guy chops his hand off after a slug crawls into his glove and attacks him. I honestly believe that is the most traumatizing movie I ever saw as a child and I never finished it, and that same harrowing fear of blood sucking bugs has followed me ever since, especially when little young Ryan later watched fucking Starship Troopers. I bring this up because that's not to say Grabbers is scary or meant to be scary, it just triggered my childhood trauma a bit so that might mean something to someone out there. I think the only broadly creepy moment is when a grabber uses a corpse like a puppet on strings to lure a victim out of the house and his severed head is discovered the next day. Granted, it's a jarring scene because the grabbers never do anything that malicious ever again, but eh, it's a cool scene nonetheless. Anyway, from here on out, in order to talk about the lock-in and all the drunken escapades, I do need to go into spoilers, but when I think about it, the only major one is a specific character death and it's kind of worth it, so I'll leave that one up to you. So in the second half, our heroes convince the locals to gather at the pub for a lock-in, but without telling them the true reason why. The utter genius of this point onwards is that in order to avoid being attacked, the characters have to consume an intense amount of alcohol to maintain a high blood alcohol level. 
As you would expect, they turn into absolute idiots and gradually let their guard down, as Kieran chooses to act as the sober leader to keep things under control. But it doesn't take long until Daddy Grabber arrives with his admittedly adorable babies and the pub ends up under siege, with some of the characters going out of their way to do things that, well, I think any of us would do while we're drunk. I would be ruining the fun if I described most of it, but the recurring joke is that tensions arise less from the alien outside and more from the threat of sobering up once the kegs begin to run dry and the locals become agitated. But I think one of the best payoffs is when Dr. Smith drinks Paddy's Pochine, which if you've never heard of it, it's basically Ireland's version of moonshine because the alcohol by volume percentage is so staggeringly high that its legal status is a bit uh, ambiguous you could say. Dr. Smith then proceeds to stagger out of the pub to take a photo for science and his drunken smugness gets the better of him because while he thinks he's invincible, the daddy grabber just bucks him into the fucking ocean in a weirdly serene way. Oh. Interestingly enough, according to director John Wright, he, along with Kieran and Lisa's actors Richard Coyle and Ruth Bradley, actually prepared for their drunk scenes by going on a pub crawl around Belfast and recording themselves to capture the subtle mannerisms they did while drunk before destroying the tape entirely. However, with that said, the film reaches its true emotional peak when it reveals that Kieran's alcoholism and depression stems from his wife leaving him, and Lisa's reassignment was a bid to escape her feeling of insignificance back home. It's very low-key, but it shows us that beneath their quirky, charming exteriors are real people with real problems. As I said before, a lot of non-Irish produced Irish stories and characters typically fall into stereotype or flanderization, where the quirks of being Irish overshadow their raw human qualities. I could point you in the direction of dozens of incredible Irish dramas, but Grabbers is able to play up those well-known quirks and still ground itself firmly in reality. It embraces Irish identity, but shatters the illusion that things are as perfect as their bubbly outward personas might show. But what brings it together is the sense of community, the camaraderie between the characters who are still playful and sassy, yet ultimately mean no harm by it. They support each other because they know full well that we're all in this life together, and it's hard enough as it is. And so that's Grabbers, it's a light-hearted sincere portrayal of typical Irish locals coming together in desperate times to fend off a threatening invasion. I'm pretty sure someone will apply a subtext in there somewhere, but I'm gonna steer clear from that one.